Yo, what's up everyone? It's Gad here, back with episode 7. And in this episode, we're finally going to be adding in shoots into our game. So I'm just going to quickly give you a demonstration of what we'll have by the end of the video. So as you can see, we've got a sound effect and a little trail for the bullet. And then also I'll show you what settings we have for it at the moment. So you can see here, we've got a variable for the fire rate, if it's semi-auto or not, and bullet velocity, and then also the amount of bullets that get fired per shot. So there's still a few more videos that I need to make on weapons because at the moment we just have the shooting set up, there's nothing like ammo and then also there's no recoil and there's no bloom. So let me know in the comments which video you want to see next. So with that out of the way, let's just get into the video. So before we get started on anything, we're going to be fixing this bug <laughs> which I found earlier. Um, it's actually really simple to fix. All we need to do is head over to the animator and then what we can do here is just delete this idle because in the walking blend tree we've already got an idle here. So back in the base layer what I'm going to do is a transition from crouching to walking. We're just going to take off the walking is true. And then on the going from walking to crouching we're just going to take off the walking is true as well. I don't know why they're both true so that, that should have been like that anyway. But So now if we go back in the game, press play, you can see that that doesn't happen. I didn't actually explain what like how it happens. But so if you held shift and then moved, it just wouldn't go to the sprinting animation because it was only going from idle to walking. So with that out of the way, we can actually just go ahead and start on the code for this video. So to do this, what we're going to do is just head over, find the gun that we added in the last video. And then on here, we're just going to add component. And then I'm just going to call this weapon manager. And then just open it up in Visual Studio. And then we're going to need a few variables in here. And then so the first one, I'm going to make a serialized field and then make this a float. And then I'm going to call this fire rate. And then underneath the fire rate, I'm going to make it just a private float. And then I'm just going to call this fire rate timer. And then finally, just for now, I'm going to make a serialized field. And this is going to be a ball. And then this is going to be semi-auto. And what I'm going to do in the start is actually set the fire rate timer. And then set this equal to the fire rate, just so we're ready to fire as soon as we start the game. And now I'm going to make two more functions. And then the first one is going to return a ball. And I'm going to call this should fire. And then the next one is just going to be a normal void, and then I'm going to call this fire. So what I'm going to do in this should fire method is write if the fire rate timer is less than the fire rate. And then if this condition is true, we're just going to return false. And next I'm going to check to see if we should fire if we're using a semi-auto weapon. So I'm just going to write if semi-auto, and then two and signs here. And then what we're going to want is input.getKeyDown. down. And then the key code is going to be keycode.mouse1. Or mouse zero, sorry. And then so if this is true, what we're going to do is just return true. So next I'm going to check if we should fire for a fully automatic weapon. So I'm just going to duplicate this if statement. And then put an exclamation mark before the semi-auto. And then take away the down for the get key down. So this means we can just hold it and every time we should fire it's going to return true. And then finally we just need to return false. And what I'm actually going to do in the should fire method is actually just increment the fire rate timer. So let's go fire rate timer and then plus equals and it's going to be time dot delta time just so it counts up one every second. So now everything's done for this method what I'm going to do in the fire method here is when we fire we're just going to set the fire rate timer equal to zero and then just for now I'm going to write debug dot log and then just type in fire. So now all we need to do in the update is just write if and then put in the should fire method here and if this is true then what we're going to do is just run the fire method. So now we can go ahead and test this, so I'm just going to go back into Unity. And then now with the weapon selected, I'm just going to change the fire rate, something like 1, so we can easily test it. And then when we press play, I go onto the console, and I hold down the left mouse button. You can see every second is printing out fire. And we can try with a semi-auto now. So now every time I click, it's going to add another console message. And now with that out of the way, we can actually go ahead and start firing the bullets. And before we do anything, just make sure that on your weapon, the layer is set to the player as well. So for now, what I'm going to be using for the bullet, I'm just going to right click on hierarchy, go under 3D object and add in a sphere. And then for the scale, I'm just going to set as 0.01 for all of them. And what we're going to want on this is to add a rigid body. And there's only one thing we want to change on here, which is the collision detection, which we're going to put to continuous dynamic. And bear in mind that the mass for the rigid body, we want to leave this at 1. And this is because we're going to have a variable for the bullet velocity, 
and if we change this mass then the velocity isn't going to actually equal what we set. Now with that done I'm going to add another component and this is going to be a trail renderer and then I'm probably not going to keep this but it just makes it easier while we're testing so we can actually see where the bullet's going. And for the width I'm going to bring it all the way down to 0 0.01 and then at the time I'm going to set this to 0 0.005. And there's one more component we want to add to this and we're going to create one called the bullet and what this script at the moment is just going to be for destroying the bullet when it collides with things and in the future episodes we're going to be using it to deal damage to the enemies and now back on the sphere what i'm going to do is just change the name to bullet and i'm going to go in the project window here right click create a folder and then i'm just going to call this prefabs and i'm going to double click to open the folder right click create a new one and then I'm just going to call this bullet. So now I'm just going to drag the bullet from the scene into this folder. And then in this folder I'm just going to create a material. And then I'm just going to call this bullet mat. And then I'm just going to make it something brightly coloured so we can see while we're testing this. And now I'm just going to click on the bullet prefab in the project window. And then go to the mesh renderer. And then I'm just going to put this bullet mat into the material here. And then finally I'm just going to scroll down to the trail renderer and then put the bullet material for the material for this. Now with the bullet all set up, I'm just going to delete the prefab from the hierarchy. And then I'm going to head back over to our weapon, and then open up the weapon manager script. And so now just to tidy this up a little bit, I'm going to add in a header. And then I'm just going to call this fire rate. Because we're going to end up having quite a few variables in the script by the end. And now I'm just going to make a new header here. And then I'm going to call this bullet properties. And now, so for the first one, we're going to have a serialized field, and then this is going to be a game object, and I'm going to call this the bullet. And after this, we're going to have another serialized field, which is going to be a transform, and then this is going to be called the barrel position. Next, there's going to be another serialized field, and this one's going to be a float for the bullet velocity. And next, we're going to need a reference to the aim position in the aim state manager. So here, I'm just going to type in aim state manager and then just call this aim and I'm just going to get this in the start by going aim set this equal to get component in parent and it's going to be type of aim state manager but there's one thing we need to do in the aim state manager because this aim position here is actually a serialized field we need to make this public and there's one thing you might want to do because this aim position actually gets lerped so it's not always technically going to be looking at the center of the screen what we could do here is just make a hide and inspector and this be a public vector 3 and call this something like actual aim position and then in this if statement we created last episode we can just add in here the actual aim position and set it equal to the hit dot point but I'm not too worried about this so I'm just going to get rid of this but that's what you can do and then just use that variable instead of the aim position so now this is public back in the weapon manager what we need to do is just going to get rid of this debug.log in the fire method here and then quickly another variable I'm going to add in now is just going to be another serialized field and I'm going to make this an integer and then this is going to be bullets per shot. And then so what this is going to do if we want a shotgun which has like 8 pellets per shot we just set this to 8 and then it will fire 8 bullets at once. So now when we fire we want the barrel position to look at the aim position so we can just go barrel pause and then dot look at and then put in the aim dot aim position. And now after this we're going to write a for loop and this is going to be for in i equals zero and then i is less than bullets per shot finally i plus plus so in here we're going to make a variable and this is going to be a game object which we're just going to call bullet i'm not going to call it bullet because we've already got a variable for that uh, just call this current bullet and then we're going to set this equal to instantiate and what we're going to instantiate is the bullet and then it's going to be at the barrel position dot position and then finally the barrel position dot rotation so now we have a reference to our current bullet we want to add a force to its rigid body so we can do that by just going rigid body call this rb then we're going to set this equal to the current bullet dot get component and we're just going to get a rigid body so now we have the rigid body we can just go rb dot add force and then the direction is just going to be barrel position dot forward and then we're going to times this by the bullet velocity and then we want a comma and just write in force mode dot impulse so now we can go ahead and test this 
So all we need to do to get this working is just right click on the weapon and create an empty. And then I'm just going to call this barrel pause. And then I'm going to get a bit closer to it and put it to where the barrel is. And then you won't have to change the rotation because in the script it's just going to look at where the aim position is. So now back on the M4 or whatever weapon you've got, we can just drag in the barrel position here. And next we want the bullet, so I'm just going to open up the prefabs folder, go into the bullet and drag that in there. And then for the bullet velocity, I'm going to put this as 500. And then the bullets per shot, we want it as 1. And then also I'm just going to change the fire rate to 0.12. And now when we press play, you can see if I look up and start shooting, it's probably quite hard for you to see, so I'm just going to change the trail renderer a bit. So here I'm just going to change the width of the trail renderer to 0 0.1. And then also on the bullet mat, I'm just going to turn on emission. And we can just click on this, and then I'm going to put it to the green. And then just make it a bit brighter here. So now if I play this again, it should be easier to see where it's going. But there you go, you can see it much clearer now. So next what we can add in really easily is just a gunshot sound effect. So on our weapon, what I'm going to do here is just add an audio source in. And now in the weapon manager, I'm just going to add in another serialized field. And then this is going to be an audio clip. And I'm just going to call this gunshot. And then finally, the only other thing we need is a reference to our audio source. So if we just get audio source. And then I'm just going to call this audio source. Now in the start, we can get this by just going audio source equals get component. And then just putting an audio source here. So now in the fire method before the for loop, what we can do is just go audio source dot play one shot. And then we're going to pass in the gunshot. Now in Unity, all we need to do is put a gunshot sound effect into this audio clip. So I quickly just found one on the internet and I'm going to put this in here. And now in the game when I start shooting, you can see that it's going to play the sound. Definitely not the best sound effect out there, but it'll do for now. Okay, so before we get too carried away, there's a few things we need to do. On the bullet prefab, we want to create a new layer here. So I'm just going to add layer and then call this one bullet. And then make sure that we set the layer to the bullet. Now in the edit menu at the top left, we can go into the project settings. And we want to go into the physics. And down right at the bottom, you can see we've got a layer collision matrix. And we want to uncheck the bullet where it intersects with the bullet. So this means that two bullets can't collide with each other. And then also we want to make sure that the bullet can't collide with the player. Now that's done, we can just go onto the bullet prefab here. And we can actually put some stuff into this bullet script. So for now this script's going to be really simple. All we're going to have here is a serialized field float. And then this is going to be time to destroy. So after however many seconds we put, it's going to destroy itself. And this is because just in case any get outside of the map, they don't just keep falling forever. And finally we just want to float, and I'm just going to call this timer. So in the update, what I'm going to do is just write timer, and then plus equals time dot delta time. And what I'm going to do under this is write an if statement. And this is going to be if the timer is more than or equal to the time to destroy. What we're going to do is just destroy and then put in this dot game object. And the last thing we want in here is going to be the on collision enter method. And then simply if we collide with anything at this point, we're just going to go destroy and once again pass in this dot game object. All right, so now technically when we shoot, it should fly and then hit the invisible wall we made and then it's just going to destroy itself. But now you can see it's not actually firing anything and it's just getting destroyed straight away. And I think that's because on the bullet prefab, yeah, we don't have a time to destroy. So I'm just going to put this to turn. So now if I try this again. When I shoot, they go, you can see it firing off, but they're down here. They're just destroying themselves. So that's everything for this video. Let me know what you want for the next one. It could be either the recoil or have some bloom or some reloading and animations. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.